These are cones of the Scots pine that I collected off a tree that um, fell over during the storm we had in early December here up in Cumbria and elsewhere in the UK. And almost all of them are collected off the ground and they're green and are nowhere near opening up. And I'd just be interested to see if any of these yield any seeds. Um, this year or whether these were destined to be seed producing next year as may well be the case so anyway we've got these seeds they're, put, they're in a they've got these cones and they're in a warm place and we'll see what happens so here's our green cones that were originally had and not opened after about a not quite a month in the warmth and as we can see we're getting a whole pile of seeds out of them now and um, we'll see whether these seeds are viable. The seeds I've just showed you have all fallen out of their own accord in the bag that was sitting in the airing cupboard as the cones naturally opened. However, if they get lodged in the cone, just give the cone a good solid tap and the seeds should fall out. So here's the seeds, or some of the seeds, that I've got out of those green cones that have browned off and opened. And so I'm going to moisten them over a 24 hour period and we'll come back tomorrow to see what the viability is like with those. Half of those will stratify and half will just plant straight out. One thing we have to address before we plant our seeds is whether to stratify them and that's to give the seeds a period of cold to mimic exposure to winter and typically this is done by placing seeds uh, in a, a damp substrate in a fridge for a period of time. Now some pines require stratification, some don't and in the case of the Scots pine it's not entirely necessary although I think from the evidence I'm going to show in a little bit that it improves synchronization and rates of germination and is worth doing and in my case I do it for about a month. And we can see the effect of lack of stratification here with this pot that was set up about three months ago and we've only got three seedlings there of which one has only just uh, popped its head up in the last two or two weeks or so so the it, uneven germination and poorly synchronized germination and we can compare this when we look at a pot set up on the same day with similar seeds that were stratified for one month beforehand and we see there's many many more seedlings there for about the same amount of seeds there was probably about 20 seeds in these pots so there's the probably the evidence that stratification is a good way of improving your yield of seedlings and the synchronization of those seedlings. At this point I need to mention the phenomenon known as damping off. Now this is an, a fungal infection that occurs in lots of seedlings and it causes the seedlings to uh, flop over like this at uh, which point you need to get rid of them because it's likely that you'll lose a whole pot although I didn't in this case and this was a problem early in the year when they were sitting on my windowsill with very little light and it was quite cold once the weather got warmer and uh, there was more light around it disappeared as an issue. I tried a variety of approaches to setting the seeds off in the spring and late winter. Uh, one was to simply put about 20 or 30 seeds in a half litre pot with compost and that was topped off either with vermiculite which was a waste of time or later on sand and grit mix just to keep the, the surface dry and a little bit sort of more sterile because of the damping off issue. I also used seed trays which were just uh, general purpose compost uh, and a little bit of vermiculite and those, those worked quite well. Then I also just tried a very scattered gun approach of putting the seeds in big pots such as this one here, sometimes uh, a no number, sometimes I just chucked uh, maybe 100, 200 seeds in the pot and uh, my other approach was to put two or three seeds in some of these tiny cells and I, this was the first approach I did and I rapidly discarded this because I did it too early in the the winter 
and everything just damped off on my windowsill with uh, no seedlings surviving. Well, looking at one of the pots I set up from the seeds from the green cones, the seeds were non stratified and they were put in the pot on the 1st of February. And after just over 100 days, this is what we've got. We're in the middle of May and of about 30 seeds put in there, around half have given rise to a seedling, some have damped off. So at this point, I think these seedlings deserve a pot for themselves. So what we're going to do is we're just gently going to take our fork in here. It's quite dry in here, I haven't watered much, and just loosen everything up a little bit. And then hopefully we'll be able to get our Scots pines out without too much damage. There's three, so we'll just pop one up. And if you just take our little pot and make a, a hole for it, and then that one isn't uh, too heavily rooted and that should do us now I'm just going to moisten off the surface a little bit so it's just standard compost in the t in the bottom with some sandy grit and that should do us so I'll do the rest of them and uh, come back in a sec so I've potted up 13 of the the uh, Scots pines that were originally in that pot over there. There's another five or six left. So we've got about 18 or so um, seedlings out of original 30 seeds from our green cones. They weren't stratified, so this isn't bad, this. So I'll keep these seeds inside for tonight just uh, to make life easy for them. Then they'll go outside and take their chance. I raised a few seedlings in trays like this and in this case the seeds weren't stratified and after two months I'd got a quite a decent crop of um, Scots pine although the gaps indicate that germination was patchy. If you don't want that many seedlings then you can probably get away with not stratifying your seeds. The roots were mostly well developed in these seedlings so I thought it was time to put these up individually by just scooping them out and we'll follow a few dozen of them to see how well they do. So here are our Scots pines that we pricked out about a month ago and of the 17 pots that we set up we've had 100% success with just one looking a little bit sorry for itself here. And we've even actually got a bonus one as we transported some of the soil a uh, seed must have been in it and we've got an extra one there so all in all a good success there and they're coming on quite nicely I forgot about some of my seeds because they were somewhat surplus to requirements and they spent seven weeks in the fridge during spring and when I came to look at them they were just a tangled mass of roots and I didn't really need these uh, to grow trees or anything else for that matter so I thought I would just put them in a variety of pots and tubs and trays and see what I got and will follow the fate of a few over the summer. These are some of the seedlings derived from the seeds I got out of the green cones and these were planted three weeks ago these were the surplus the leftover so to speak and um, they've become really leggy because they've been inside and they need some light now. A few have keeled over, maybe through damping off or whatever. But as you can see, they're uh, pretty nice seedlings and we're going to put these in some cells and see how well they grow in cells as opposed to individual pots. So here I am pricking them out uh, into um, root trainer cells on a nice early summer day and uh, they, they're going into the standard compost and sand mix and there's one thing of concern that I had at this point is that they, because they've never been outside they haven't been hardened off in any way so their chances of survival might be reduced over those that have been slowly introduced to the outside weather and light intensity. Here's our root trainer cells that we um, added seedlings to in May and on the face of it it all looks as though things have gone pretty well. 
However, they didn't. Um, most of the seedlings flopped over in some exceedingly wet weather we had immediately after that dry spell. And as a result, I replaced a lot of them with other seedlings from other sources. And they've mostly done pretty well, except for one or two that have got a bit of sunburn and one, one or two have died but it's not looking too bad now so the lesson there is firstly harden your seedlings off before you um, prick them out and choose the right day to do it so that they don't get um, absolutely murdered by the rain then the sun then the rain here's some of the Scots pines that we pricked out earlier on in the year and as you see uh, of the 12 that we did uh, we've got 11 seedlings and some of them are done pretty well like this one some not so well like this one it's been very difficult weather for them hot and dry hot and dry all the time it's better weather now so this is the middle of July now and I expect by the end of the year they'll be looking more like some of these over here that are from last year Right, it's the 21st of April and I thought I'd go large with the remainder of my seeds. These are seeds I'm still collecting from the green cones collected before Christmas and I haven't done too much with them. Some of them have still got the wings on. Uh, they've just been soaked overnight and I'm just going to see if I can grow a little forest in this pot here. So I'm just going to whack them in. And that's got them and then I'm just going to mix them up a bit to spread them out not doing too much of anything with them here just to see because I've got plenty of Scots pines now so hopefully in a month or so we could have a little forest growing here or maybe nothing we'll see and then I'm just going to cover it up again with some sort of sandy grit with a bit of compost in as well just to bury them a little bit not too much and this is just going to sit inside for the next two or three weeks until guaranteed no frosts and then we'll see what happens and we'll come back in about a month and see whether i've got a little forest here who knows what will happen Here's some of our Scots pine that we planted in April and as you can see now they've grown really nicely and uh, these will need thinning out soon. It's the middle of July now, 21st of July and um, they've been through some really hot weather. A few have been nibbled perhaps by slugs like that one there but they're doing really well. So here's our Scots pine that we set up willy-nilly in a big pot with lots of seeds in April and they've grown really well and as you see it's very crowded now so they'll have to be separated out at some point before autumn sets in into a larger container or individualised like these. And these were the ones we individualised earlier and as we see some of them have grown really well like that one whilst others haven't done so well but nevertheless in a year's time I expect all of them will be at least as good as this one which is one from last year that is just about outgrown its pot now and um, so all in all we've done quite well with our seeds from our green Scots pine cones and I think we'll leave it here because it's apparent that it's relatively simple to grow them and we've been joined by a cat. So there we have it, it's relatively straightforward to grow Scots pines, all you need to do is to find some trees that have got cones on or cones lying under them that haven't fully opened so that you can take them home, put them in a warm place and allow them to open over winter, collect the seeds up, remove the wings and then in the spring, not too early mind you, you need to put them in some water for a, 
a overnight and then stratify them for a month in the fridge just wrap them in some damp uh, tissue and then pot them out uh, whichever way you found most suitable for your needs by about May your seedlings will be ready to go outside so gently introduce them to the outside world by putting them outside during the day and bringing them in at night until there's no more risk of frost once the your seed trays or your pots of seedlings start to look crowded you can start pricking them out in fact you can do this over the course of the whole summer as I have done uh, this year and in most cases your seedlings will be robust and survive you'll lose some as I did uh, when I did things wrong and uh, they don't need an awful lot of care just keep them relatively well watered but don't overwater. and they needn't have full sun they probably prefer it a little bit shady and uh, in a, a few years you'll have some beautiful young saplings that can be planted out to grow into wonderful Scots pine trees.